This is Julie Bonner. Today we're going to talk about a solvency ratio called debt to assets. This is a measure of financial health for the long term, meaning that for the foreseeable future, the company will be able to operate, generate profit, be able to pay its bills, all that sort of thing. This is a measure of financial flexibility, and we'll talk about what that means here in just a moment. First, how do we calculate this? The numbers for this calculation come off of the balance sheet. You want to pull the total assets number and the total liabilities number. We take total liabilities and we divide by total assets. So here's an example of where we're pulling this information. Again, this is for Brown Foreman. I'm just pulling their balance sheet off of the yahoo.finance.com and highlighting for you the line that I'm talking about on the balance sheet itself. So here are the numbers for Brown Foreman. For example, in the first year, year A, they had total debt of $2,071,000 and total assets of $4,103,000. Remember now, these are in thousands, so those are actually billions of dollars, $2 billion and $4 billion. When we do the calculation, year A, we have 0.5, year B, we have 0.55, and year C, we have 0.4. So what does this mean? Well, contrast this to the current ratio. When we were looking at current ratio, we were taking current assets divided by current liabilities, and the result that we got, we wanted that number to be higher than one. We wanted it to be greater than one, and the more greater than one that you could possibly have would be great. In this calculation, however, we want this number, the resulting calculation, to be less than one. Why is that? Well, because think of your own personal financial situation. If I'm taking care of my personal finances, I personally do not want for my total debt to equal my total assets. That would make me very, very, very uncomfortable. Because if any kind of catastrophe happened or any kind of situation happened where I couldn't pay my bills, then I'm in dire straits and I could hit bankruptcy and all that sort of stuff. Well, this is the same exact idea for a corporation. And for here, Brown Foreman is doing pretty good. Of course, it would be even better if it was a little lower, but we must recognize that sometimes we have to finance our assets, especially our plant, property plant and equipment. We have to finance that sometimes through debt instruments. Maybe we don't generate enough cash flow to totally finance it ourselves, but some amount of debt is not a bad thing. So what this means for Brown Foreman is that to finance its assets, they have 40 to 55% debt. Okay, so now let's take a look at Diageo. Diageo is making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's not that it's terrible, it is less than one, but when you compare it to Brown Foreman, they're not, they're not handling this particular financial ratio nearly as well. Now again, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go into bankruptcy anytime soon. It doesn't mean that they're not handling their finances well. Plus there may be something about their business that's a little bit different than Brown Foreman, and that's okay. The more you study, the company, the more you'll know these nuances to how they operate. So it's not necessarily that as an investor, I would run away from Diageo. It just causes me to sit and pause and I think, well, I need to do a little bit more investigation as to why they're a little higher on this particular ratio. And then finally, we have Constellation Brands. Constellation Brands is right in the middle between the other two companies. And again, it, it's maybe not a terrible thing. Uh, it just causes me to pause. 
And right now, just based on this, I would favor Brown Foreman over any of the others as far as their debt to assets ratio. Now, if you have questions about this, if anything's not making sense, please leave your comments. Let me know how these are working for you, and I'll see you on another video. Thank you.